Great, so what I'd like to do today is I'd like to talk about how the nephron is able to produce concentrated urine. So when we're dehydrated, the kidney's got a big job to do. It's got to, it needs to hold on to as much fluid as possible because when we're dehydrated, the last thing that we do, need to do is to lose more fluid. And um, this process of concentrating the urine and reabsorbing all that water, it occurs in the nephron. Specifically, it occurs in the collecting duct, okay? Well, just as a review, what I'd like to do, we're gonna go over the different parts of this nephron. Here, you've got the um, arterial that feeds blood to the glomerulus. Remember, the glomerulus is just this bundle of capillaries that has fenestrations in them. And the glomerulus, his job is really to push out all that plasma from the blood so that we can adjust it, okay? So all this blood gets filtered, the plasma gets pushed out, it's collected in this big kind of um, <clears throat> balloon-like covering, this balloon-like covering, that's called the glomerular capsule. So you have the glomerular capsule here, this collects all that plasma, that um, all this fluid then flows into the proximal convoluted tubule, where all that good stuff that we want to keep, where it's absorbed. So things like our ions, our sugars, our you know vitamins, um, everything that we need to put back in the blood is absorbed. <clears throat> then it flows through the nephron loop. And if we remember, right about here is the division between the outer cortex of the kidney and everything below here is the medulla. So after we go through the proximal convoluted tubule, it dives into the nephron loop, which goes down into the medulla. After that, it comes up here, goes through the distal convoluted tubule, where more things in the urine are reabsorbed. And finally, this urine gets to the collecting duct, which will lead to the calyx, then to the pelvis, and the ureter, which leads to the bladder. So everything that is in this tube that kind of makes it out of the collecting duct, that's leaving our body. That's not no longer going to stay with us. So <clears throat> when we're dehydrated, this guy needs, this nephron needs to be able to reabsorb as much water as possible. And it starts with the release of ADH from the posterior pituitary. So when we are dehydrated, the concentration of solutes in our blood and all of our body fluids increases, like our body gets a little saltier. And what that causes is it causes the posterior pituitary to release ADH. So ADH increases, and what that does is that ADH will stimulate aquaporins to form in the walls of the collecting duct. So that'll increase aqua porin. Now remember, aquaporins, these are just special protein channels that are gonna exist right here that allow water to move across a cell membrane if water wants to through osmosis. So let's say we are dehydrated and ADH is released and that causes a bunch of aquaporins to form in the walls of the collecting duct. Now another important thing that happens here <clears throat> is that in the medulla we have this steep gradient of saltiness, okay? And this steep gradient of saltiness is called osmolality. Osmolality, okay? At the top of the medulla, it's really not that salty. The osmolality is about 300. But at the bottom of the medulla, it's super salty. We're looking at a osmolality of like 1200, okay? So it goes from not so salty to super salty. All right, let me extend out our collecting duct here. All right, so now what we have is we have this urine that is getting dumped into the collecting duct from the distal convoluted tubule. Now this urine that enters into the collecting duct is not very salty. It has a saltiness or osmolality of about 300. Okay. Now, what do we know about water and salt? We know that water is always going to follow salt. If we move salt, water is going to follow it. Okay. 
So we have this urine that's not that salty. It goes into the collecting duct and this urine's gonna flow down. As it flows down, the environment around that collecting duct gets saltier and saltier. We know that water follows salt. So if water can move out of the collecting duct, it will. It wants to get to this super salty environment out here. And that's exactly what's gonna happen because now we have aquaporins. Aquaporins are gonna allow that motion of water. So as the urine goes down, that water is gonna flow out through all these aquaporins into that salty environment. By the time we get down here, the urine is super salty. It's like 1200, just like the surrounding tissue. We've essentially captured, recaptured much of the water that was in our urine. That's perfect because we were dehydrated and we don't want to lose that water, okay? So the collecting duct is really where the urine gets concentrated and it's because of this steep gradient in salt that they exist in the medulla. Now, the nephron loop has a really important role. The nephron loop is responsible for creating and maintaining this gradient in salt. It starts with a series of capillaries that encase this nephron loop, specifically in juxtamedullary nephrons. These are the ones with the long nephron loops that are great at concentrating urine. So here I'm gonna take this efferent vessel that comes out of the glomerulus and I'm gonna make him go over here. And he's gonna go over here to the ascending limb of the nephron loop and he's gonna flow down and around and then back up. All right. And this guy is called, this is part of the vasa recta. Vasa recta. And the flow of blood in the vasa recta flows like this. It's going in this direction, this direction, and it flows down, 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 and then up. The flow of urine in the nephron loop is going in the opposite direction. It flows down like this, then up, like that. That's going to be important. The first thing that happens <clears throat> is that in the ascending limb of the nephron loop, we're going to have the active transport of sodium out of the nephron loop. So we're going to pump sodium out. So in this side, on the ascending side, sodium gets pumped out. And as this sodium gets pumped out, it's going to get picked up by this vessel of the vasa recta. It's going to pick up all that salt because it's right there. All right. Now, as it picks up all that salt, it's going to carry that salt down because that's the flow of blood. Essentially, we're making this tissue down here saltier because we're pumping salt out, it gets picked up by this vessel, salt gets brought down, that increases the saltiness of everything down here. That's what creates this salty environment in the bottom of the medulla. Another important factor of this ascending limb, all right, so with ascending limb, not only does it pump sodium out, it has no aquaporins. This is important because if there were aquaporins in here, the water in the urine would just follow the salt and we wouldn't be able to increase the saltiness down here. All right, so there's no aquaporins in the ascending limb. Now, when this saltiness gets down here, it starts to come back up. If we were to let all this salt just go back up to the cortex, that would also be bad because we'd be ruining, you know, the, the the fact that it's not so salty up here. We want it to be really salty down here, not so salty up here. We don't want all this salt to travel back up. So now, what will happen is that in the descending limb, you've got a ton of aquaporins. And what this allows is that as the fluid in this urine dives down, it's gonna wanna follow the salt. We've got a lot of salt coming up and this water is gonna flow out. Water follows salt, it's super salty down here, so it's gonna flow out. That does two things. 
it returns this blood flow that's coming up, this part of the basa recta, before it gets to the cortex, it makes it not nearly as salty because now it's being flooded with water. And we're able to basically maintain the cortex that's not salty and then the medulla that remains to be incredibly salty. So this is called a countercurrent multiplier where by pumping sodium out, we're making this area very salty. And as that salt returns up to the cortex, we're allowing water to flow out of the descending length of the nephron loop. And that returns the saltiness of this blood back to normal, which is around 300. So here, the saltiness of the blood is around 300. Down here, it's super salty at 1200 which is exactly what we need to recapture that fluid in the collecting duct. Now, when we're overhydrated, something very simple happens. Our posterior pituitary stops releasing as much ADH. That's gonna decrease the number of aquaporins that are in the collecting duct. If we Water won't be able to leave the collecting duct, no matter how salty the surrounding fluid is, and all that extra water is dumped into the ureter and ultimately the bladder. So essentially, when we're over, over hydrated, this decreases the number of aquaporins, water can't leave the collecting ducts, and we get rid of all that extra water. We don't need it.